What's up, everybody? How's it going? Uh, my name is Mr. Thomas. A little bit of a different vibe on this video, as you can see. Um, I've got a big camera screen. I'm probably like massive on your on your screen right now. Usually when I film videos, uh, they're usually with the intent of teaching you a lesson or trying to show you something um, to teach you about government or whatever else kind of content you're trying to learn. This video is going to be a little bit different. This is the first of probably many videos I'm going to make uh, about making a proper study guide, which speaking of proper, fix my camera. There we go. Um, so what I've decided to do, a lot of my kids have asked Mr. Thomas, we're studying unit one in government and then my other class unit one for human geo. Uh, we need a study guide, but we don't have one. And I always just tell them, just read through the class lectures. Uh, I make like manuscripts for them. And then also to read through the class notes. Um, that's also an excellent way you can do it, but they've been complaining like, no, we want like everything in one place. And first off, I'm thinking that doesn't make any sense, but it's whatever. So I won't rant about it, but I've decided I'm going to make a video showing everybody how do we create a study guide. So today you're going to make a study guide with me, and this is going to be the study guide for unit one. And uh, down below in the description, I'm going to have a link for it. And you're more than welcome to just go to that link and just take it and not watch this video. However, uh, this video and all of the other subsequent videos are going to show you kind of the methodology behind creating a proper study guide. You want to make sure you hit all forms and facets of the information you want to make. Again, I'm trying to teach you how to fish. I'm not just trying to feed you the fish if you catch my drift. So here's what we're going to do. Let me switch to a different scene here. Um, you might notice that I have like a brand new um, little border. I think that's really cool. It's my school colors, which I think are dope. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a study guide together. Now I'm here in my Google Drive, and this is uh, the four sections I've created for government. So if you just go into a random one, you'll see that here is the entire class lecture that I've created, right? So this is kind of like whenever my kids study things week in and week out, I typically give them this lecture. And this is kind of everything I have to say. And I also have it labeled so that you have like 1.1 through 1.3. So like uh, if you're studying the different individual concepts from the AP curriculum, this is how you do it. Uh, I did derive all of this from multiple sources, so I can't really like link all of those all together. But I just wanted to show you kind of this is how I'm going to be working out of, um, you know, creating study guides. So all in all, we are here to make a unit one study guide. So let's click on new. Uh, you can do this with me if you want. I would suggest you to do it with me only because it's probably really good practice for you. Uh, we're going to click Google Doc. It's going to create a brand new one. Now, for me, it says create a shared folder. I've shared this with a few of my colleagues. I'm going to click create and share. Now, what we're going to do is at the very top left, you're going to make this unit one uh, AP of study guide. Boom. Should I put a smiley face of that? Oh, it messed up. That's okay. Um, now, here's what we need to do. For me, I always start with, uh, like once I start writing it, I always start with my header. So, uh, unit one, foundations of American democracy. Let's center that up. That, I always prefer Times New Roman, just because I did that in college. So, I'm never going to break out of it. And let's also increase its size just until you want it to be big enough to fit on one line, but not too big where it's multiple lines. So we keep going. Okay, so 26 is too far. So let's try 25. Nope, 24. Oh, right there, 25 does work, my bad. So here we are right here. And then what we can put underneath it, it's gonna be a little bit smaller. Um, but AP study guide. And then I would put your name, so. For me, it's Mr. Thomas. Now, you want this to be a ladder effect. So this is 25. So let's go down, I don't know, three maybe. There we go. And then this one. Boom, perfect. Now, you don't have to do this. This part is optional. I'm going to include my own watermark because I plan on posting this um, in another place. So there's my watermark right there. I have a few that I could include. So there we go. That's my watermark. Everything looks good. And now we can start. Now, here's the thing. If you want access to like I write these guides right here, if you want access to those, you're more than welcome to. Um, this one right here is particularly free and uh, anybody can just kind of access it at any time. However, 
I do run a store on Teachers Pay Teachers where I've written all of these like unit sections. Right now, currently, I have up to unit five, section two. Um, I need to post everything else that's here, but pretty much anything that you want of mine, you can access it from my Teachers Pay Teacher store, which again, I will link down in the description below. But this is kind of how I work. This is a little bit of a side gig for me. Um, I know that it's a little bit cringy because I use all of these bitmojis. But I've noticed on Teachers Pay Teachers, a lot of the teachers are kind of boomers and um, they kind of like the whole niche classic teacher vibe. So I just decided I'm just going to try to advertise to the people that are probably buying my products. So I included my own bitmojis. Um, I feel a little cringy doing it, but you know, this is kind of how these work, right? So you can click on any of these. It takes you to a special place and it shows you even a little bit of a preview, right? Does this look familiar to you? Probably looks something like this one, right? But again, it's the content for you know, unit five, section four. So all of my units, all of my curriculum is in four sections uh, for every single chapter. Some of them have a little bit more. Some of them have a little bit less. There's, I think unit two has five and then uh, unit three only has three. So, but the rest of them, they have four sections and they all match this thing too, by the way, like, you know, uh, there's like individual government titles it all comes down from here. Like there's these different sections. In fact, uh, there's a really good resource I have listed here called Fiveable and Fiveable uses, like they, they make the same thing that I do. They make guides uh, for anybody who wants to access. And I think this is really good. Uh, I always recommend to my students, if you need extra study stuff, go to Fiveable. It is paid. They do give you some free ones every day that you can access. And then after that, there's a paywall, but you can pretty much access these. I use, I have like the, the annual Fee. I, I pay like an annual membership and uh, you know, there's 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. You can just click any of these and it takes you to the exact thing itself. I think these are great. I really like these. Um, at times I've cited these in some of my work, but at the same time, again, mine are a little bit different. I like to take several of these and put them together. So like 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1 I kind of put those together um, and I put them all kind of in one lecture because like you know, there's just a whole lot of talk here and I can I can make that pretty, pretty summarized, pretty good. So anyway, uh, back to what we're doing, we're going to make a study guide. So here's what we want to do. Let's make two different windows. And what we're going to do is I always add my 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 line right here to separate the content from the title. So we're going to do that. OK, perfect. Get on here. We're going to make it 12 font and we're going to make it on the left. Now, when you make a study guide, there are three different parts of a study guide or potentially five. It depends on how big your unit is for this particular uh, study guide that we're making for unit one in government. We're going to split it into three sections. So let's make section one, section two and section three. Okay, so let's put some space in between. And then what we're going to do is the particular line itself. Let's increase it. And I like to uh, italicize it and then bolden it so that people know that we're moving on to a different section. And then we'll do the same thing here. Same thing here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to access some of these uh, particular areas. So like, for example, in section one, um, again, let's put some space. Uh, I have the introduction to government here. And so we can put, oops, um, for section one, we can just put content. And then section two, if you scroll down to like the bottom of some of these, um, I don't think I have anything here on this one, but there's others. Whoops, shoot. Um, let me go back to that. Government stuff, you don't want guides here's one you don't want section two let's go to the bottom you've got some notable ideas here and usually it's got everything you really need i also have these notes i've made like student notes i also sell these these are pretty good but yeah yeah these are pretty good right here so what we can do is section one is going to be content section two is going to be um specifics so like for example um, in the AP exam itself, you need to know some required documents. Uh, you also need to know um, some court cases as well. Those can be pretty beneficial. So for this for this section two, it's going to be those specifics. Section three, we can just put vocabulary. 
And that's how we're going to make this study guide. So section one is content. Um, right now we could make um, government definition. So if I'm in my student notes right here, um, it looks like this is the definition and my preferred one. So we get to put uh, know the government definition. And there we go. And number two. And then from there, um, uh, let's see, even vocabulary. So key democracy concepts, if you can see right here, these are all pretty important. And so we're going to copy and paste those here. We will, oh, let's paste with formatting them better. There we go. Now, uh, it looks like principles of American government. So you need to know the principles of American government. And so you can just take this first line right here. It's a, like I said, I mean, all of this is important. I'm not trying to downplay it, but it's, again, this is a study guide. So it's going to guide us into studying. So let us go down a line and then we'll indent. We'll put some natural rights. We'll put popular sovereignty. Um, and then uh, we'll probably put the social contract theory. Yeah, right there. And this is 1.1 1 .1 through 1.3. But then what we can do is go down a line, go back. It looks like right here, this section is telling us what is democracy. And uh looks like democracy means the power. So we have this definition of democracy. And then we can go down, do the same thing that we did right here is there are five different types of democracies. You just put there are different types of democracies paste and then we can just include these five and then again boom perfect look at that so that is coming from our section one notes again we have a section one lecture uh we'll put it right here this is the lecture again like i said uh this is like the big meat of it these like section one lectures you see this guide right here if you see guide that means that's a lecture and then uh, here's the notes and there's like the notes section you'll you'll notice it says listed on tpt and uh that that means i'm selling it on tpt but the first of every type of thing that i i, I sell it's always free so like these section one notes and the section one guide they're both free right now on teachers pay teachers so you could potentially access those if you wanted to um so that's what that looks like it's like grammarly's popping up so now we're going to go to section two and so in section two, it's uh, 10, that's 12. So let's it's up to 12. Let's do go back. It's the size. Hold, I don't want it. Hold. Let's go back to the notes handout. These notes are working wonders for us. Um, it looks like section two notes, which is AP 1.4. So again, that's reference to this right here. Um, Looks like we talk about our first form of government. So let's make a title. Our first form of government was the articles. Oops. Boom. Now, um, if you know anything about unit one, you'll notice that we have why the articles and the weaknesses and then like some good stuff, some bad stuff about it. And Again, this is very summarized, so it's not going to be perfect. It's just kind of an outline. So, um, we talk about how the articles were okay for our time against the British, but they kind of sucked pretty bad afterwards. So, we're going to indent that. Coming out as 10, I think it's because of the original source. Let's go back. Okay, and then, um, know the articles oh the weaknesses keep doing that i have a really bad time with like uh highlighting stuff okay so weaknesses of the articles 
And then uh, I have them listed here. So copy, paste it. Now I'm really big about like formatting if you haven't noticed. So increase that. And then uh, what we're gonna do, oops, let's increase that as well. So let's do that. Highlight this, highlight this, this, and then let's bold it. Perfect. And we go back, increase, boom. Now it talked about the Northwest Ordinance. Uh, one good thing about it was the Northwest Ordinance. So we can do that it's here. Okay, perfect. And then the Roche's Rebellion, which comes afterwards, and that kind of revealed all the weaknesses. So instead of putting all this here, so we can put understand the context of Shay's Rebellion. And why it's revealed the this is Again, I keep capitalizing that R. Okay. And then I put some notable ideas right here. Um, these notable ideas, I don't really see a need to really include them. I just kind of left that for my students. So I say we include this. But what we do is paste it in. And then we add it in as subsections. And then we can, I don't know, boom, no, let's do this, paste, boom, there we go. All right, we're cooking now. All right, so that's great. So now we move on to the next one. So we're doing content. So let's go to section three notes. Here. So. We talk about presenting the problem right here with Shay's Rebellion. So now we go to the Constitutional Convention. So let's do this. I actually have an AI uh, video. Let's go to ChatGPT. I use it for a lot of stuff. I use it to help make me um, like quiz questions and give me some ideas. And so log in. Uh, let's use my private email. Let's see what that. Okay. Cool. Um, let's do this. Let's put in, summarize the constitutional convention in two sentences. Yeah, pretty good. So let's bring that over here. Paste it here. Perfect. I love this. All right, so now we move on to the Great Compromise. And again, kind of the same situation here. There's a lot going on. Um, so let's, and like I said, there's a lot going on. So uh, let's do this. Let's do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna put summarize the Great Compromise in both sides of the debate. I'll include that. Uh, love that. So, one thing that I've always told my kids in class is my problem with ChatGPT is kids use it in place of their own work. And that's always my biggest problem. And um, I don't think ChatGPT is necessarily wrong. It can be sometimes. But for the most part, I just don't like kids using it. Um, for their own work. All right, so we have the three-fifths compromise. Um, we don't need to go too in-depth about it, but it is important. So discussed at convention. Four. Boom, love that. That's point 10. Federalist papers. Um, point 11, we'll probably put these principles right here if you see this. 
looks like I meant to make this a second section. So actually, let's do that right now. A little bit of on the fly editing my other stuff. Oh, that's orange. Actually, we do like orange school colors, right? Don't want to get in trouble. So let's highlight these principles in the Constitution. Those are important. Now, these Federalist Papers, that actually goes, probably goes in the specific section. And actually, if we're being honest, probably these right here go into the vocab section. So actually, let's do that. Let's put these in the vocab section. Just, um, we can edit that later. But these specifics, um, these all come from my notes. Is that uh piece of that formatting yeah and then we can add the numbering system again and we'll probably restart it yeah love that okay so that's section three did we include everything i believe we did go to section four All right, so this whole section right here is what we need, but I'm not comfortable throwing all of that in. Again, this is starting to get pretty lengthy. So let's go to ChatGPT, and we can put summarize the Constitution's um, structure. And while that is giving us that, let's take this first little subheadliner right here and make it number 11.11. .11 can paste it we can increase its size well i don't want it to be underlined we're we doing on time pretty good all right so here's this we have our summary uh take this part out because i already included it And then amendments, boom. Subsections, go back to the numbering, pretty good. Next one is federalism. Do we include that in the vocab? Yeah, it's right there. But it has its own section in my curriculum. then again i uh i've said this probably like three times now but i really want to re-emphasize it because it needs to be said over and over and over again that this study guide isn't meant to be uh, an end-all be-all it is meant to be like i don't know like a summarized version of all the content that we've covered or you've probably covered in unit one um, just reading this alone isn't going to be enough. But if you've paid attention in class, you've studied, you've worked really hard, this is a really great like, oh yeah, I've paid attention and I have an A in the class, but I have a test coming up. So let me read over this like maybe once a day just to kind of, you know, keep me up to date on everything that's going on. That's kind of what it's for. Um, I don't want to give the illusion that this is an end-all be-all because it's really not. Um, there's a lot of information for every single... Um, unit for government there's five units and you kind of need to be locked in on all five and know all of the ins and the outs um so there's that um yeah so don't rely on the study guide by itself but this is an, an excellent way to study um now we have this reserved expressed and implied powers i'm kind of caught in between but i think we're gonna put it in the main content section and um let's take this copy it paste it here and then uh we will piece its size and then we're gonna highlight oops okay so it's not going to let us uh 
multi highlight like I earlier, which is super annoying. Okay. Now the supremacy clause, the necessary proper, the commerce. Let's put on 16. Um, let's put know your clauses. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll make like a little mini subheader. And we'll put supremacy clause. And then we'll put necessary and proper. And then we'll put commerce. Let's highlight these. And change them back to normal. Let's make the color um, black. Perfect. Number 17. It's like we have a government table here. So let's just include it. And let's put that in specifics. Uh, we can put know this table. All right, drop that down. And then it looks like we've got uh, McCulloch versus Maryland. So let's put both of those together, actually. Um, know your cream or pieces. And then we'll do a subheading. United States versus Lopez. And we'll include this sentence. And we'll include this one. Paste. And uh, paste your intent. That's pretty good. Now, let's go to some of the lectures and see what we're missing. No, no information. Okay. And then it looks like I have a review right here from one of my lectures. So, at the bottom, I know I have three sections. Can I include a fourth? No, you have to do three or five. Always keep it odd. So, let's start messing with structure. Looks like there's no 17. Okay, and now we include in highlight. Highlight. Oh, yeah. It's uh, in dumb. Oh, did it? <laughs> it gave me the wrong color. And I know this table. Let's go ahead and bold that. Running out of time. I've got those highlighted. Okay. So pretty much done. Um, let's just change a couple of things. Set, set. Pretty good. Okay, 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 okay. Now the vocab isn't necessarily done per se. Um, but what we are gonna do now, again, I'm running out of time here. I don't want to go over thirty minutes. Let's include all of this and let's double space it to give you some room. No, I don't like that. Um, let's do this. Let's double space these list formats. So we could do this, double space. Uh, no, I think that looks dumb too. Um, again, big aesthetic guy, big aesthetic guy. I think this is pretty good. Um, let's add a space in between maybe some of these. Yeah, I think that looks That was the money shot. Okay, so other than like basically the formatting, I, I always like space. I like to be structured. I can read this line by line now. Um, so that's that's kind of how I make study guides. I know that I use all my own stuff, but like if you have your own class notes, if you're a student, you have your own class notes. If you're a teacher, you have your own textbook. I really just go through. I mean, I just use what's available to me. I use Fiveable. I use my own stuff. I use ChatGPT. So. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section below. 
But that is how you make a study guide in less than 30 minutes.